What's happening guys? Today we're going to be learning about how to create a beautiful matte finish on any of your photos here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. What's going on guys? My name is Brandon from Outbound Media and you can find me on Instagram at Burnwells. Before I get started, I just wanted to let anyone who's new here know that I make new Photoshop tutorials every single week. So if that's something you've been to, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Now a request that I've been getting at a pretty consistent rate is how to create matte or filmic looking photos. So that's what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do in this tutorial. Now this technique might be a little bit different than something that you might use in like photo manipulations or composites, but this technique looks really amazing on portraits and especially so with wedding photography. This sort of filmic look can really add a cool twist onto any of your images. So if you guys are wanting to follow along with this exact image just for some practice, then feel free to download this image via the link in the description below. So what we're wanting to do with this image, like I said, is we're wanting to create a nice filmic sort of vibe here. So how are we going to be able to replicate that here in Photoshop? So the first tool that we're going to use that actually does probably the bulk of our work here is the exposure adjustment layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click that. So as you see, we have our little box that pops up here and we have these three different options here. So I'm just going to go to my offset option and I'm just going to bring this slider up a little bit. Now you see it sort of adds this faded effect to our image. So the amount of fade that you add into your image is totally up to you. I wouldn't say to go overkill because then it starts to look a little bit weird, but what I like to do when I'm doing this technique is I'll just add a little bit, maybe around 0 0.5, 0 0.6. In this case, I'm going to go right about here, and then also I'm going to go to my gamma correction, and I'm just going to bring that up a little bit just to make it a little bit darker, just to bring some of that, just to take away some of that lightness, but leaving that matte finish. So that looks really cool. So now if I just turn that on and off already, you see that we have this matte sort of look already added. So we're just going to add a little bit of a green tinge to this image just to make it feel like it really is a film photo and it's not just an effect that we added in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm just going to create a new layer and then I'm just going to go up here to my color palette and I'm going to go into the greens. Now obviously I'm not going to be wanting to pick a lime green because that's going to look a little bit weird but I'm going to hover sort of down here around the blacks and I'm just going to want to pick sort of a dark murky green. So sort of imagine like a swamp green is what I like to call it. Once you've selected that murky green you want to make sure it's set to your active color down in the corner here and from there you can just press alt and delete and then it will fill your entire layer with that green color. So now what I'm going to do here is obviously I don't want it to be just green because where'd my image go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up here to my opacity slider and I'm just going to slide down this all the way to zero and then I'm going to work my way back up to find a sort of an area that looks nice to me. So right about here is a nice amount of green that works for me. So now you might see that our image is looking a little bit dark and it's just because we've sort of added a color on, we've added a dark color on top and then we've also changed the offset. So I can just go back in here to my exposure. I'll just bring up my exposure the slightest little bit, just like that. Now the next thing is that these really bright colors are not quite vibing with the overall image here that we're going for. So we want to try to adjust some of those as well. So now what I'm going to do to adjust these flowers to match the rest of the image is I'm going to grab my hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to just go down here to my magentas, which is where all of this, these flowers will likely be. Just to double check, I can go to my saturation slider, bring it up to 100%, and now you see that everything that is very, very colored, that is what's being affected by this channel. So I know that all of these flowers that I'm wanting to sort of desaturate and lighten a little bit are in this channel. So I can just double click saturation, get it back down to zero there. And now I'm just going to play around with the hue to find an area that I'm liking. So in this case, I'm kind of leaning towards this light pink color as it's sort of like an old timey look. And I'm also just going to bring up the lightness just a little bit and maybe even just bring down the saturation just a little bit. So now if I just turn this hue saturation layer on and off, you can see the difference that that made. So now those flowers are really vibing in with the rest of our image and it's starting to feel more like one. Now that we've added our beautiful matte finish, what we want to do now to make it look filmic, let's add a little bit of grain to it. Now, of course, Photoshop does have a feature here. If you go to filter, then down here to noise, add noise, or you can go to dust and scratches. Now what I like to do is I just go online and I'll type in film texture. There's a whole bunch of different images with different textures that you can use totally for free and you can add them into your images. So the one that I'm going to use today is just this random one that I found that I sort of like the look of. So I'm just going to go into my downloads here and I'm just going to drag and drop it into my image. Now since this is vertical and my 
image is landscape, I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees by pressing Command T, right clicking, and then I'm just going to rotate 90 degrees. Perfect. So now I'm just going to rescale this so it fits into my entire image. Just like this. Perfect. So now our issue is how do we put this texture onto our image without sacrificing one or the other? So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my blending mode from normal down here to screen. So basically what screen does, it gets rid of all of the blacks in our image. So as you see, all the stuff that's left over is pretty much the texture, which was the white stuff on our texture layer. So obviously this is a little bit overkill. So I'm just going to go up to my fill slider here and I'm going to bring it back down to zero. And then I'm going to work it back up just a little by little until I get a little bit of texture that sort of does the trick for me. So just a little subtle thing like that does it for me. And what I'm noticing here is there's a little bit of texture on her face and things. And since we have the option of where we want the texture to be, we might as well try to get it off of her face. So what I'm going to do to get rid of it on her face, I'm just going to click my texture layer here and I'm just going to add a layer mask, grab my brush tool, make sure I'm painting with black and I'm just going to mask out some of that texture around her face just to make sure that we're not adding any imperfections onto her face. So once I get to this point, what I like to do is I like to just go back and double check all of my work. Is there anything that I want to add more of or take away from things like that? So in this case, in my hue saturation slider, I'm just going to bring down my master slider saturation just a little bit, just to sort of make everything look a little bit more faded. And then I can even bring up some of the lightness just to really add to that faded look that we're going for here. So now if I just turn all of these on and off, you can see the difference that we just made. We've made a very colorful and digital looking photo into a more filmic and vintage looking image with only a few adjustment layers, which is the best part about it. So guys, that's pretty much it and how to create a beautiful filmic look onto any of your images using Photoshop. Now, if this tutorial helped you, I would love if you hit that like button and maybe even consider subscribing. I make new Photoshop tutorials every single week. If you decide to use this technique in any of your images, whether that be portraits, weddings, or any of your digital art, I would love to see it. So make sure to tag me at Burnwells if you decide to upload to Instagram. If you want to see more of my work, make sure to visit my website at outboundmedia.net for a complete portfolio. Or if you want to see more of my tutorials, just hit my name down below and visit my YouTube channel for all of that YouTube tutorial goodness. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you for this week. And I hope to see you back here next week for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then. A big quick thank you to everybody who's been tagging me in their images on Instagram. It's been super awesome to see the cool twists that you guys put onto my tutorial lessons and things like that. If you wanted to see my latest and greatest tutorials, just click right over here. If you wanted to see something that YouTube recommends you, then click right over here. One last reminder, I just wanted to say make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next week.